Okay, so we've got an exciting unboxing to do here. This unboxing will be spread out over a few videos, really, of the contents or the rehousings, maybe. Um, but anyway, it's exciting. Let's see what's in the, what's in the box. Some of the things I don't actually know because it was a four random slings type job. I just thought, well, yeah, 12 quid, no, 13 quid. Can't really go wrong. I mean, the chances are I'll probably have most of them. But might be something in there that I wasn't expecting. Well, hopefully. So I know what some of these are going to be. I always forget to get a separate box ready for the music. I don't want to just spread them all over the place. Less exciting things to start with. Nice fruit fly culture. These are the small ones. So I wanted the small ones. And then these should be the big ones, hopefully. Um, standard black, yes. Nice big ones there. Okay. Not hatched out yet, but oh, there's, there's one or two actually. Yeah, there, there they are. Okay, that's good. Right. Now. See what we've got. So, Orient. This is a Formictopus Orient, two to three centimeters. So, it's good. I'd ordered that, so that's what I was hoping for. This must be one of the random ones. No BT, one centimeter. <laughs> okay. Didn't need another OBT. Well, no, actually, maybe I do. I've got a, got a large female orange form. And I was already thinking, should I get a male? So there's a chance that could be a male. Enchromatus. So Enchromatus, one centimetre. Now I think I've got an Enchromatus, my mystery spider. So I didn't really need another one of those. An Agen Eculata. Is that one centimetre? So I've got an Agen. Agen. And I really like Agens, to be honest. So that's not a problem. These are. So so far, these three here are out that sort of mystery slings. And this is a H. Villicella. Now, I ordered this. There's a Tanzanian chestnut. It's a dwarf, one centimetre. One of the ones I ordered. And then I've got N. Incy Gold. Now, that's another one I ordered. I've got plans for both of those. They're more, they're like heavy webbers. That's why I ordered those. Dwarfs, heavy webbers. Both things I like. And this is a Lassiodora Kluge. I've already got one of those. So, all four of the ones for 13 quid I've got. But that's not a problem. I kind of half expected that. And then we've got the Femictopus Bayarnaya, I think it's called, two to three centimetres. That's another one that I ordered. And the reason for that was I wanted Femictopus, obviously. Um, and then the last one is the Therophosa Roatan, just because I'd never heard of these before and I had a research. There's not many about them, not much about them, but they look like cool species. The purple, Roatan purple, it's called. So that's what's in the box. Okay, so that's the first part. We've opened the box. Everything that's supposed to be here is here. Okay, so as you can see, I've been very busy. Pile of water bowls there. Those two arboreal type setups I've not actually fully made up yet because I don't know how big these are going to be. And then I've got two XOBT things there, and I think five, one, two, three, four, five of those those size for our pass, and one of the small, put some of the tarantula ones, and all these things. So I think I'm pretty well prepared. Got the bags full of uh, moss, forest floor stuff, leaves and all that, and uh, cake plants and bits and bobs in there. So I think I'm prepared. So it's all about rehousing and seeing if we've got any dead on arrivals, but let's have a look. Okay, so we're all ready to go. I'm going to start with this one, the Femictimus by, by a Harby, think you say it? Two to three centimetres, so two to three centimetres might actually be too big for one of these. So I've got one of these lined up here. They grow fast anyway, so I'm not expecting them to actually be in one of these for a while. Um, let's just see what happens. I get each one out, they're all alive, and I get to take a photograph would be ideal, wouldn't it? Okay. My 
experience with spiders is the sizes always seem to be a little bit on the optimistic side. So. Okay. So this is the violet. Oh, there he is. It's a reasonable size. It's not too big for that. Yeah, he is two, three centimeters actually. Let's spread out like that. Oh, there's a den down there for him. Whoa! <laughs> Um, poor old thing. Oh, like your thing, get chucked on the floor. See what's there. Right, let's try again. It's my huge brushes, it's one of my little tiny brushes. Move it around nice and slowly, actually. Okay, so I don't think he's going to be in there more than a molt, but he is fine in there. Be sure of that. Put the lid on him. I know Tom Moran talks about feeding from Ictopus immediately, and I just take it, they're not bothered. But I'm uh, one of the things to do, to be honest. The next one. I've already got my labels printed out and everything. I'm doing really well here. Okay, so for next on the list, it's the Phenictopus Orient, which is a red, red Phenictopus, or red bird eater, if you want to call it. Obviously a normal Phenictopus atricomatus is called a red island bird eater, so this is very similar. And that last one, the Bayar, whatever, could just be another name for the Dominican Republic. Oh. So size-wise, it's about the same. Oh, look, it's a little bum in the air. See that? Obviously, it pretty much looks the same as the last one. But it's maybe we can do it all calm with this one, just let it walk out. Yeah. There we are. Oh, don't go in straight away. Please don't go in straight away. It's going to disappear. And walk out again. I don't think it's going to. Oh well, anyway, that's that's good. That was a good rehousing. Just calmly walked out into his little hide, and everyone's happy. So that's great. Let's see how they do. I've got a label printed for that as well. Okay, so we're back. Um, it's quite a bit later. I just couldn't get the time to do it properly. I did manage to make all these up before I went. So you see, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's seven enclosures there. There's another one on the shelf, which is a different type. So we've still got a way to go to see what all these are, see what they're all like. Anyway, let's uh, jump straight in it again. I'll, well, I'll, I'll talk about enclosures as I think a spider should go into it. Okay, so we're looking at the H Villa Cellar, basically. And I'm thinking a slightly more arboreal-ish type setup. You've still got bits of bark under there, you can get in comfortable. I like a bit of height for the webbing, you see, so that's what I was thinking of. If it's, yeah, that's not, yeah, you go in there and that's how small it is. H for the cellar, the dwarf trash nut. I had one of these and lost it, and I'm pretty sure it was a red one at ETM. Ooh, small. It's a dwarf anyway. This is a lot smaller than the last one I had. But, um, don't think I'm going to get a particularly good picture of this. Oh, there you are. That's it. Anyway, fast. Go in, go in, go in, go in. Put it in. I had this problem last night. Yes, it's going in. It's in. Oh, this is the screw down one. Okay. Yeah, it's there. I might even be able to get a really zero did photograph. Let's try. Okay, so that's done. It's still there. Oh, no chance. 
some great photos there, I think. So I'll put out that. This is one that I'd already printed the label off. I knew I was getting this one. That's Tristelli in the cellar. Okay, I'm back. Next, we've got the N Incy Gold. One, one centimetre, I think that says, rather than one to two. Um, yes, I've got a choice. If it was two centimetres and it looked big enough, then I want it to go in there. But if not, that's going to be an OBT, OBT, I think. So, let's see what happens. I've got this other one set up for it, which is basically the same as the last one. I used for the H Villa Cellar. We'll just see what size it is first. Oh, it's bigger. It's massive compared to that last one. No, it's not massive. So, obviously this is going to be the gold version. It's got quite an olivey type body at the moment, so... Yeah, looks great, that does. Heavy webbers, that's why I got it. Anyway, let's try and get a photo of Okay, and now we're back. So, I think, it's obvious it would be happy in here, I think. I'm just chancing that the OBT isn't microscopic. I'm going to risk it, I'm going to put it in the other container, which is what the one it's going to go into anyway. That's about. But this is set up with this in mind, this species in mind. So it's quite arboreal ish, but there's enough substrate and bark for it to get comfortable down there. This is what I did for my last H filler cellar. It's going to be slightly different to get it in there, that's an issue. I suppose it could just run in, that's maybe easier actually. Here it goes. Bring in a bit for this last bit of action. <laughs> in it goes. Yeah, let's just walk it in there. Can't see very well in there, can we? I'll just about see where it is. I'll catch its leg just in case. I think that's yeah, gone in. There's water in that bowl. These have all been moistened down. These. But actually, did I do this one? No, this one I didn't. Just got it in the water bowl. The reason being is that it was probably going to be for the ABT. Just want a little bit more. Show you a bit more in there. Okay. Put down. Label on. Okay. Next on the known list is a Therophosnii rotan. Rotan Island Purple Spider, I think, or something like that's called. And I'd never really even heard of these or seen them or anything. And it just popped up. And so, hmm. so I looked into it, and there's Tom Runners in a video, and there's hardly anything out there, actually. It's not a very common species. But from what Tom Runners says, these grow fast, very fast. Um, and they're quite sort of docile as adults. And uh, you know, so there's lots of qualities about them which could make them ideal beginner spiders. It's small. Delicate. I just thought I'd have to take a chance on this. There, there it is. Just wandering around in this bit of tissue. Oh, this way. Come back out again so we can sort of see what we do. Anyway, looks really nice actually. It's tiny. It's going to be lost in there, but I, well, I do have a small alternative. Yeah, I suppose I'll have to go in here, won't it? It's just, it's just lost in the other one. I mean, really, I suppose a vial would probably actually be best for it, but I'd, I'd like to try and get them set up like this if I can. Just, yeah, I prefer this because I've got more control over the humidity and the water, or I feel like I have. The way I do things, let's be that way. So, I suppose it's just what I've got confidence in. So let's 
be nice. I keep them reasonably moist. It's got decent sized holes in it as well. I think that should be fine. Like that. 